This Sunday is a very special Sunday. Not only is it Father's Day, but it is week two of celebrating the goodness and faithfulness of God, the, his goodness and faithfulness that brings victory in our lives against all opposition. And we are celebrating the fruits of unwavering faith. Hallelujah. So we started last Sunday, and we are continuing now this Sunday with this special celebration. Hallelujah. Uh, so right now, I actually want to invite to the stage, um, I want to invite to the stage Demarie, if you could come first. Hi, Demarie. Hallelujah. So uh, you were here with your family, with your brother and your mom and your sister, like two weeks ago, right? And God moved in power and touched them. Hallelujah. We have a little video to play, right? Can we play it right now? He hasn't been speaking. He's having trouble speaking, and doctors have diagnosed him with autism. And so I know he's going to receive so much and just be delivered as well. Amen. It's time for freedom. Thank you, Jesus. I declare now every spirit of autism, every mute spirit, I declare must leave him now in Jesus' name. I speak his mouth to open up, and I speak total healing in his mind in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So that was from two weeks ago. And do you want, you have a testimony to share about him? So my brother, um, like we already had noticed, my mom had noticed just that he was different than all of us growing up. He didn't speak. He didn't babble. Like at four to six months, they say babies babble. He would hit himself um, and just throw fits, like no words at all and just fuss. And when you prayed for him, we started seeing a big difference. <laughs> like huge difference. It was, it's, I'm still shocked. In just less than two weeks, already he's now saying the words okay and why when he never even spoke at all. Like at all. <laughs> so, and usually um like children who are diagnosed with autism and just showing signs of that one of them is also just not being open to eat any other foods they stick to one food and that's all they want but he just recently tried a different food as well just yesterday and that was amazing and now like he can tell like before he wasn't able to tell when someone's talking on the phone to him like communication or anything like that and now like if we put the phone to him and someone's on the phone he communicates he'll babble like and he never used to babble before like ever at all like not even a word and now he does that and just there's just so much more like now he um he can make sounds like car noises if you tell him like oh what the, like, does this sound make? And he'll make the sound. And he never did that before either. So it's just like miracle upon miracle. And even his um, daycare lady, he goes to daycare. She even told my mom, she called my mom and said, I already seen a big difference in Elliot. He's talking, he's babbling. There's so many progress that she's seen. And I'm just in awe of Jesus because God is so faithful when he, I just have a heart for people and just my family and to see him move in my family is just, it's such a miracle. It's so touching and our family is our first ministry and so it's just amazing what God is doing and I honor you apostle so much for just what God is doing through you because my brother would not have received this miracle if it wasn't for you. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you for sharing. Praise God. We rejoice. Hallelujah. Jesus, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. His power is so real. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I want to invite to the stage now uh, Al.
Alba and both Christine's and Maria. Hallelujah. So as we are continuing to celebrate this Sunday, the fruits of unwavering faith in God's faithfulness and goodness, um, you know, last Sunday I had a few of the people who are on the official serving team, I had them share, uh, well, first of all, though a few of these people, they had been here actually on May 30th, the day that revival broke out where 300 came and from there it just kept growing, the revival, amen. And, and one of them had come about a, a month later or so. And uh, they testified. Now we have these lovely ladies who are also on the official serving team, and they also have been here. You three have been here on May, thir May 30th or around May 30th. You were all here as well, 2021, 2021, or July 4th. Okay, so you're around just two months later, and you have been here for about two years. And I just wanted you to share your testimonies of just what God has done for you in this anointing, in his power here and why you have stayed amidst so much opposition that came. Okay. Um, so I've been coming here for three years. I uh, started out at Pan Pacific Park. Um, I first saw you on Instagram. There was a reel, and it was um, someone getting delivered. And I was just so excited to, s to see that because, I mean, you read it in the Bible about people getting freed, but we just didn't see it, you know, now. Um, Anyway, I got excited, and so I, that following Sunday, I took my mom and my brother, and I said, let's go. I don't want whatever your ancestors did in the past. I don't want it. So, so you know, thank God they were willing to come. So we came, and we uh, continued to, uh, continue to, to um, attend, and um, I've been delivered from alcohol and cigarettes, and tormenting in my mind from uh, just a lot of guilt, condemnation, a lot of regret, um, a lot of fear. And um, I was just so in shock that I had so much peace in my mind. And um, there's times when I would wake up um, depressed and I didn't have any reason to be depressed. It was just there. And um, anyway, I started um, attending your service and I'd sit all the way in the back hidden and um I just started noticing like I didn't have a desire for alcohol or cigarettes and I just had so much peace in my mind and at that point um it was just race well racing negative thoughts in my mind and um where I wanted to seek therapy I thought there was something wrong with me but um, two weeks, well, two weeks before I thought of that, um, seeking therapy, that's when um, I attended your services. And um, I've been free for three years now. And I thank God, I thank Jesus um, for that and for you, Apostle. Also, um, I know that I've received impartation. I've work, I work in a hospital and a lot of sick patients and I pray over them. And um, Holy Spirit touches them so mightily that they cry. And I, um, I've had um, patients um, been delivered from anxiety and fear and um, insomnia. They, they have um, told me they were just in shock and they spread it around the hospital. I try not to do that, but um, <laughs> he, but they. But anyway, yeah, I had a patient who was just in shock. He, ha he hadn't sleep slept for three days, and after um, I prayed for him, he told me the next day that was the first time he's, he slept for so long, you know, in so long, also um, from anxiety. Um, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Jesus. I'm very grateful to be here. Um, I don't take this for granted. I really don't take this for granted. I've been going to several churches here in LA and also a mega church in Houston thinking that if I go there, you know, there might be miracles uh, for me. Um, but um, I don't take this for granted. And um, I know many people online would love to trade places with me. I, I know they'd love to serve here. Um, so thank you so much. Glory to God, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise God. Thank you, 
Jesus. Uh, hi, I, I wrote it on a card because I get nervous speaking in front of people. So, <laughs> so um, yes, before I came to Fawful Church um, almost three years ago, um, I went to different churches, little churches and big churches, and um, I didn't know at the time, but um, I was oppressed and um, just had a lot of things going on with me, but I, I felt stuck, but I didn't know why. So I would just go to church, worship, hear a good message, and you go home. There was no change. So, but when I came, Jesus, um, it, it happened over time, you know, layer by layer. And Jesus freed me from the orphan spirit, um, witchcraft, spiritual spouses from halitosis. Um, and at the Flourish, Flourish Conference, the Python spirit, and also, um, I think right before the Flourish Conference, that service, you prayed for me. And um, you uh, said that you, uh, you were breaking off the pattern of thinking that was causing a lack of spiritual sight in my life. And now it makes sense. So thank you. And um, the opposition, I did in the past did hear, hear some videos, like one or two, and uh, I heard a little bit and I just, I stopped because I couldn't hear any more of the lies. And what really hurt my heart or my spirit is that they, they disregard all the testimonies of what Jesus is doing. <laughs> and the reason I keep staying and serving and coming under your, um, your ministry is because after receiving all that freedom, I, I'm hearing now the gentle voice of God. <laughs> and also, um, the Holy Spirit keeps revealing things from my past to renounce. And also free, now that I'm free from the religious spirit, I now fellowship with the Holy Spirit and your example of humbleness and how you speak words of, li uh, words of life when others hurt you, having those, those uh, things, I'm putting them uh, into practice in my own life and I'm seeing this transformation and your teachings. And so that's why I stay because I see the fruit I see the power of God move in this ministry. Um, I see um, God's love. God's love. So thank you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Christine, and you came around that time to May 30th, and you moved from Las Vegas. I think you were the first person who moved to LA from another state just to serve at 5F and be here in person. And you moved within just, I think, two months or, or a few months or so of finding the ministry. I remember seeing you in the beginning, traveling from Las Vegas about every other week sometimes. And then a couple months or so later, you moved, right? And then, and then there's been so many. If you've, if you've moved here from a different city or state, can you stand up to be here, just to be here at 5F? <laughs> Hallelujah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 11, 12. Wow. Glory to God. Glory to God. You were, you were truly a seed. Your, your testimony was a seed for all of them to come. If any of you who moved here have been encouraged by her testimony or even others that they have moved and that helped encourage you to come move too, can you just stand if that's you? See, you are a powerful seed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Where do I start? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, when I found Apostle, it was I was already going through deliverance. It, it, it began for me fall of 2018. And I didn't know any vessels personally that could help me. I was looking for a church. My dad had just passed away. I moved to Las Vegas. 
and my dad lived in Minnesota. So I was looking around for a church and I started looking online because um, I began getting demonically oppressed. Um, and I couldn't find, and like when, when I thought I found this church and I asked this pastor to pray for me, he couldn't help me. And so God began to, I had to sift through the resources online for God to begin to slowly help me. And then I found Apostle when I was already following this other ministry online um, through a chat. They were asking, who, who should we invite for the next um, guest speaker? And they were like, what about Catherine Trick? She's doing amazing, amazing things in the park in LA. And then I found out you had a YouTube channel. And I thought it was amazing. There's this pastor, and it's a really small chat, but she chimes in on the chat every now and again. And it was very personal. And I honestly, I never served at a church before. And it, that, that was my first impression of you. And then from there on, I was like, when she people would be like, when you began to travel and, and they, they were like, are you going to be back on church for Sunday? And you're like, we're going to be at the park every day forever. <laughs> and I was like, I'm in. <laughs> like, like, I'm totally in. Like, I, I don't want to go to a church where I don't ever see the pastor because I've been to those churches before or that the pastor's not shepherding the sheep. So I'm like, I have to, I have to go, you know. But I, I began going every other Sunday. Uh, summer of 2021, and God, he just totally made it all happen, and I've been delivered and set free from so much. I don't think I can, like, talk about it all up here, but um, to touch on a few things, you know, there were, like, a lot of, I, I was really sick for, like, four or five years, um, way before 5F Church, um, not way before, but like right before 5F Church, I was really sick and I was still healing and needing more deliverance. And so it all happened at 5F. Um, yeah, I, I've never met anybody like Apostle Catherine. She's a very beautiful person. And um, before I even moved, I began to see like a lot of just uh, things online. And the Holy Spirit, he, he led me to not, not, I, my, my old way would be like watch them you know, but um, he was already changing me and molding my heart. And he's like, don't watch that. And yeah, because these people have no idea who you are. And she's an amazing person. I mean, I, didn't, I don't know anybody like you. Uh, you're the only person that I know that is the most Jesus-like. And so I'm honored to always be here every every Sunday. I'm honored to serve at a church. I never served at a church. I never wanted to serve at a church. It's, it's an honor to be here. It's an honor to be at a place where God's will is being done, where people are getting, because I know how much bondage I was in, and I want that for other people. I want them to be set free. The, the, they were, the, the enemy was really after my life. I mean, I had premature death after my life. So, I mean, there's no other place that I would rather be. Like, I, I can't go to other churches because... Uh, I, I know too much, you know, <laughs> I know too much, it doesn't even matter, like the, the tickling of the ears and the apologetic, apologetics and all of that, you know, it doesn't matter if they're not, if if you're not seeing people getting set free, if you're not seeing people being healed, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, God's people must be free, and I mean, yeah, it's just an amazing place to be, I, I never thought that this would be my life, I never thought I'd want this to be my life, and there's no other place I would rather be. So I don't know I, I, if I touched on the things I've been delivered from, but spirits that were trying to control and manipulate me, God had already set me free from control and manipulation, but there were spirits trying to control and manipulate me. Uh, Apostle, she's, when she talks about in her testimony how once she stepped into the anointing, the Bible came alive for my life too. <laughs> for my life too. I mean, I've had... Uh, the enemy tried to slowly take me out, you know, but away from the anointing. But I knew way, I mean, from the very beginning that I met Apostle Catherine, like, you know, <laughs> the enemy can't lie, you know. So I just, I'm so grateful to be here. It's such an honor. And just like my sister Christine said, I know that there are people that would like to be serving in this position. And I don't take it for granted. I'm just... 
sometimes I just, I'm speechless. I don't have words. I'm like in awe and wonder all the time. And Glory to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you for sharing, Christine Alba. You guys come over here more. Hi, Alba. Thank you for setting that foundation that we all need. We all need. Um, yeah, I came here in April of 2022, and um, I knew about a fivefold ministry back in 2013. So I was seeking, I was searching. I went from church to church. I had my kids when they were small, and they loved Jesus too. And then, um, then I got deviated, and uh, I, I felt a lot of condemnation because I couldn't be like. Jesus, God wanted me to be because, you know, the angel of light was like telling me you're not good enough. So um, I, I stopped. And um, when my parents passed away, um, well, before that, uh, 2019, December, um, this fear and anxiety entered me. And um, I started smoking because um, there was a, a time when my parents, I, I believed that they were going to pass away. Um, and when they did in uh, 2020, 2020 and 2021, um, that's when I had this desperation of finding God because I needed him so much. And um, at that time, too, my children, uh, especially my son, my oldest son, um, he had deep depression, oppression. He heard voices in his head. It was probably like the angel of light. Um and this is this was a picture of him back then. Um, he couldn't see the light, so um, I did it because I knew that my my family needed this needed this. And so I came to Five F Church. I remember the first day. Um, I was still at Penn Pacific, but you guys were at Elysian Park, and I got there like maybe two hours early, just sitting there waiting. And um, when the time came and, and um, no one was there, I started crying like, oh my gosh, where is everybody? Did I miss it? And then God, he's so cute. He's so funny. He brought a dog and the dog started playing with me <laughs> and I started laughing. And, and um, the, the owner was like, I don't know what got into him. And so that actually gave me um, um, animo, how does that encouragement to look again? And then I actually saw, oh, okay, you guys are at a different location, and I got there right on time. And I knew that was God telling me, no, you are here, you're in the right place. And so when I started listening to you, it was just like, wow, this is it. <laughs> I know God is talking to me, spirits here, power of God is here, and um, lo and behold, um. After 2000, like two years, like he is so much better. Um, he's talking now because your, your son, yes, my son, um, he used to be so still. He used to sit down like in the dark. He'd like lock himself up in the bathroom for hours. And um, now he's communicating with us again. He goes out on walks with the dog. <laughs> And he's just cleaning the house and just, you know, like he's coming back. And I thank God for that. He, wow. Like this and couldn't stand the light. But now he's going outside. Yeah, he's with the cat. And now he's, he's outside again. <laughs> And I'm just waiting, I'm just waiting for God to, to just bring them home, bring them home, back home, because I know they love Jesus. Glory to God, hallelujah. And what made you stay with all the opposition? Or if you want to also share any more testimonies. Oh my goodness, what made me stay? The power of God that's here. My husband, he had uh, several heart attacks within two week period. And finally he went to the hospital um, they admitted him right then and there. He had a, uh, enzymes of like over 19,000, which was off the charts. And uh, the doctors told him that he, he should have been dead. And I know that that's, that's the grace of God upon him because he's going to have a great, a powerful testimony. 
And then uh, his his family used to be very volatile, like they hated one another. But now there's peace. There's peace now. And and my um my husband and his aunt used to have really like awful relationship and now they actually talk and laugh together so that's i i know that was grace upon them grace upon my family so why why would i leave why would i leave god is here he's prepared he's preparing our hearts and our families and our lives and our health so i'm yeah i'm here for good <laughs> praise god glory to god hallelujah hallelujah our German family. Come, our 5F German family. And, and Nicole and Megan. Today is really a day of celebration. It is prophetic you're here on this day of celebration. Wow, it's so amazing to see you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Wow. Thank you, Jesus. You all want to flourish, right? Yes, you all want to flourish. Hallelujah. So for time's sake, I would love for each of you to share what you experience at Flourish. And if there's any, I know you also received a lot of miracles prior to Flourish. So if you just want to list them briefly. Megan? Yeah, so from Rhode Island, from Rhode Island, um, I came here so hungry to be delivered and I was delivered of so many things, um, so much mental torment, so much bondage. I was in therapy for 17 years and God set me free in 17 seconds. It was truly night and day transformation. Um, when I came to Flourish, I honestly, I hadn't had time to get hungry for it. And I had received a message if I could, you know, create a video getting people ex like just for the event. And I was moving and like my whole apartment was in boxes and I just like sat on my couch and I made this video and I forgot like that I was living in a legit storage unit. And I just was with Jesus for an hour and it was the first time I could like get excited about Flourish. And so I was just so grateful for that. And then during the Q&A session, I was so, I was touched so powerfully because um, you were speaking about serving and, you know, I wasn't serving here that much, but God had spoke to me like, it's time to be stretched. And what you had spoke was the more that you serve, the more time God will create for you to serve more. And then you called me up during the impartation session. And, you know, it's so beautiful because everyone got these large, big things spoken. And I got, you are called to serve God and serve him and serve him and serve him. And like, I was like, this is the most valuable word I've ever gotten, right? And so just realizing that no word is too big and no word is too small. And literally, I have like 10 times the amount that I've been able to serve since Flourish after that word was spoken. Um, when you put your hand on my head and I went down, like I truly was like energized in a new way to serve God. And, and I haven't stopped literally since Flourish. So it's been amazing. <laughs> Amen. And you had been edit. She's part of the editing team. So she's part of those who have greatly lifted off a big burden that I had because I was doing like all the editing myself for up until like maybe a year or so ago. So thank you so much. No, stay here for a second. And, <laughs> and so you were serving a little bit before. And then ever since Flourish, all of a sudden, so many videos were being sent to me. And they were amazing, and they were anointed, and I've been posting a lot of them. So a lot of the videos you've been seeing recently have been because her, her making them, her serving God. So thank you for saying yes to God. And do you want to briefly share the, the experience you had as you were laying on the ground after receiving impartation? Yeah, so... Um, I was touched so powerfully by God and, you know, I was just like laid out sobbing and crying and I watched the replay and I hear like someone screaming, crying. And I'm like, is that me? Because it could be right. Like I just wasn't sure, but I was on the ground and I was just like 
kind of aware what was happening around me. Like it was so weird. Like you felt like you were so close, but you were so far away. And um, it was, you could just feel the presence of God. And as more people get delivered and delivered. And one thing that no one has mentioned yet is like, it was eight minutes that so many people were down, 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 down. You can see the clock. And so many people are touched by God so quickly. And, you know, I could just feel what was happening around me. I heard someone weeping behind me and I was weeping and you could just feel God's power being poured out in the room. He was just pouring and pouring and pouring. And like, it wasn't like he was getting tired. If anything, it was like there was more energy in the room, like as he was pouring and it wasn't like he was just in one place. It was literally like you could feel him everywhere. And it was the most holy moment. It was so beautiful. And I honestly like cannot even put into words like what it was, but all I know is that I am not the same and I am so changed from that moment and that time in God's presence. Amen. What do you, so we have Flourish, Mexico City, Berlin, and New York City coming up it, so soon in July. All of these, wow, hallelujah, in August for New York. So what do you have to say to those, to those watching online, those who are in America, those who are in Europe, those who are in Mexico, if they should come? Like, what do you have to say? Yeah, it is worth it. It is worth taking the time to prepare your heart. It is worth taking the time to get hungry. And it is worth just surrendering to God to be undignified and unashamed of what it looks like because you are just soaking in the presence of God. And the first day, like I was serving, I was serving at the event and I didn't really like get to like get into the place of like receiving. And so I came day two because there's multiple days like so ready to receive. And God touched me in the Q&A in there was like a break and I was on the ground the whole break sobbing and then it was the impartation session and so if I had to say one thing it would be show up and allow God to move however he wants to move and you will truly leave not the same person amen hallelujah Nicole from Illinois, Peoria, Illinois. She hosted the Revivals Now Peoria, Illinois event last year. Thank you for your obedience to God, for funding the event and making it possible for so many to be delivered at that event. And thank you for serving at 5F. Thank you for serving at the check-in table. She served at the check-in table on, on uh, well, I don't know how many days, but day one, you actually had to, sac you sacrificed and missed the entire message to be at the check-in table for those who came in late. And she was so excited to encounter Jesus. This was going to be like the day of Pentecost, like the most powerful move of God. That's what had been spoken, but yet you sacrificed. Do you want to share what you received? Wow. <laughs> it was the most powerful move of God I'd ever witnessed or experienced. And I've been coming to 5F Church now for almost two years. Um, but right away, I, well, I came, let me just say first, let me preface with, I came to Flourish hungry. I had this hunger in my heart that I can't even explain to you guys, but I had a big hunger. And so, yeah, like Mama said, I served at the table, and I did. In my heart, I, feel, I felt like, man, I'm not here in the worship. I'm missing the message. I'm trying to sneak in the door, listen to the message coming back out. Um, but Praise God, I was able to come at the end when, during ministry time, and, and I was just standing in the back. And as I was standing in the back, my heart posture, just hungry and worshiping God, he started touching me in power right away. And my, you know, my arms started trembling, and there is, there is a lifelong um, battle that I had dealt with um, of just different, like, traumas and stuff like that, just different experiences throughout my whole life where I'd walked through a lot of trauma. And because of that, um, just dealt so heavily with the spirit of rejection. And coming to Flourish, I was still battling with the spirit of rejection. Like everything, um, the enemy would lie to me about everything in my mind, every little thing that would happen, or if, you know, just through people and stuff like that, I automatically had this filter of rejection. So I, I often, like, just felt very defeated or downcast or just felt, you know, I was battling with that rejection. So I actually made um, a little list of things that I was just wanting to talk with God with, and I couldn't remember hardly anything except that first night I had remembered 
okay, rejection, you know, Lord, just take this rejection away from me. And that was my heart. Like, I literally was just like, please take this rejection away from me. And I was able to move forward, and he hit me powerfully. I went home um, that night. I did sleep, <laughs> even though I was excited. I woke up the next morning, and I was a block away from Flourish Conference, and the power of God hit me again. And this time, I was carrying coffee, <laughs> and I'm, like, shaking, and I'm like, Lord, don't let me drop the coffee, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but so power of God hit me again. And then just throughout the sessions at Flourish Conference, um, he continued to move on me in more and more power. Like, my jaw was going, like, I can't even explain it. I felt this internal, like, I don't know. So since then, since then, I've been completely, completely free of the spirit of rejection. My mind's been at peace. I haven't dealt with the condemnation. I haven't dealt with second guessing, you know, overthinking. What are these people thinking about me? I've been completely freed and it is the most peaceful thing that I can even, I can't even explain it. It's been glorious. Since Flourish, um, I haven't had a chance to share this testimony. But probably about um, six weeks ago, approximately, my mom um, had a stroke. And my family, yeah, I, I share with them as the Lord leads, but they're not completely on board yet. Um, and so she was in the hospital. She had a stroke. And I immediately, like, I have to refrain myself from <laughs> sharing everything right away. And I started to pray for a second. And then I stepped back because I know some of their feelings on that. And I asked her, I said, Mom, can I pray for you? And she said, yeah. And so I declared that all symptoms of dizziness and weakness go and that, you know, her body restored to normal, whatever. Just this week, she testified to me that she's gained um, complete strength in her legs again. She's, <laughs> yeah, she was off work. She's got an appointment on Monday. She's hopeful to go back to work. Um, so just great improvement from there. So glory to God for that. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you so much for sharing. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. 5F family from Germany, welcome back. Welcome home. Now, I want you to share what God did for you at Flourish and why the people in Germany and in Europe should come to Flourish Berlin. What do you think about one of you translating for each other so that the Germans can hear? Yeah? Does that work? Does that work? Yeah, but I want them to understand in English. So what, what would you prefer? You speak in German, she translates, or you speak one time in German and then English? You got it. So she's going to translate. Well, you can translate yourself too. Or you can translate yourself, whichever. You can speak, and then you can say, you can speak in German, for example. Okay. So, also, wenn ihr aus Deutschland seid, müsst ihr unbedingt zur Flourish Berlin kommen, weil ihr werdet dort Gott so in Power erleben, wie er es noch nie erlebt hat. Heilung, Befreiung, Wunder. Okay, now I say it in English. Um, <laughs> well, you will, you will um, experience Jesus like never before. You will experience his power, wonders, healing, miracles like you have never seen in your entire life. So please come. Kommt nach Berlin, Leute. Kommt nach Berlin. And can you share your testimony of what, how, how you encountered Jesus at the Flourish? Mm -hmm. Well... I first encountered Jesus um, in power. Well, I was a Christian my whole life, but, you know, I was living in bondage like most Christians. I had, like, depression, anxiety, all these things. And, you know, my, my little, um, my youngest child, um, he was sick. He, he hurt his knee, and the doctors couldn't help him. They said the bone is okay, but we don't know why his whole leg is aching or still aching and so um, I saw your video it just popped up on my Instagram and then I um, I saw you healing 
as somebody. And I was like, woo, never seen that before. <laughs> That's strange. And then, you know, I had this dream, like the, um, the Red Sea departing. And I woke up and I couldn't explain what that mean, what that meant, but it was like, oh, some, well, something will happen. Um, I have to check that out. And so um, I saw that you would come to the Netherlands and I went to Rotterdam. And my boy, he said, no, I'm not coming with you. Um, I am, my leg is aching and that's strange. And, and I was like skeptical and I, I got there and I was standing in the middle of the crowd and I was watching everything and suddenly something tried to, you know, bend me like this. And I was like, ooh, something that, that, there's something in me. Maybe it's going to kill me because I was like, oh, that's hurting. And, and then I fell down by the power of God and I had so much peace in my in me like never before and then I went home and then you know days after that weeks after that I realized wow my life is so different I don't have fear anymore I don't have anxiety I don't have panic attacks I don't I, I'm not in anger in rage when my kids do some, something you know and it was so different and then I said I had to check this out I have to check this ministry out and I started to watch your lives. And then I had this dream seeing you like Jesus, <laughs> a discipling people. And I, I said, well, I have to go to LA. I have to find out about your ministry. And so it came last year in, in, in August. And then I started, you know, to follow you regularly, watch the Sunday services, the Zoom lives, the, the Q and A's. And I planted myself. And then we, when you were talking about Flourish, and um, I was so excited. I was like, I have to go there. That, that's going to be so powerful. So we went there. And, you know, what I have experienced, I want to experience my nation. Because we have the spirit of religion in my country, in all the churches. You know, I was so shocked because I had... You know, I had in my former church, there was a, um, uh, a man, and it, he was a godly man, but he was living in bondage. He had, like, um, addiction and things like that. And he committed suicide um, a few weeks ago. And, you know, I was so shocked because I was like, man, people have to, you know, find out about this ministry. People have to get rid of all these things in them and you know people just don't know it they go to to doctors they, they go everywhere and they try to find help and they do not get help yeah they, they maybe they get medication but they do not get help and so that's 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 a 911 <laughs> call you know so we have to and then you know you had this video coming up last week. She saw him talked about the video. Uh, I saw the video. And oh, she saw them. Yeah. Yeah. She saw them. Sorry. And um, I saw her video, and I, I was like, yeah, that's that's how people feel, and and they don't have, they don't know where to go. See, they don't have, they don't know. They, so they need to to go to a ministry. They need to go to apostles, and you know, of today. And the Bible says that they brought the sick and the demon-possessed to Jesus or to Apostle Paul or to Apostle Peter. And we as Christians, we have that's that's um yeah, that's what we have need to do. We need to bring the um sick and demon possessed to Apostle Paul's of today, like your ministry. And so that's our job, and that's why we're here. <laughs> that's why we're here today, because, um, yeah, because that's our, our job to do that. Yeah. Amen! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> and you can just speak in English. Oh, you're, do you want to speak in German? Right. In English, so I overcome this fear. Amen! <laughs> okay. Uh, when I was at Flourish, I... Uh, Honestly, I thought I went home without um, experience anything. 
And when I was there, I felt like a stone and there was a river and I was beside this river and it was horrible for me. So I flew home and I thought really there's nothing had happened, but I heard God so clearly that I have to come. So I was shocked. And um, what I recognized is that there was coming something to the surf surface and uh, the oppression and the um, demonic oppression and everything mental and all this stuff. I, I have a list here with, I think, 70 things on it where I need deliverance and freedom. Um, that uh, was so dramatic that how uh, Nicole said, when I saw your testimony, I knew I had to come today because it's such an urgent and I didn't know whether I would be here the next week. And so, Nicole, I thank you so much. Uh, she said, I bring you. Um, and yes, I think this fl with Flourish, it started. And I think today is my day too. Yes. Amen. Amen. It's time for freedom right now. Right now, God is delivering you. He planted seeds and now the faith is ripe. This was God's will for you to come to flourish and receive these seeds to make you ripe for a faith and freedom today. Hallelujah. I declare I, everything you've written on this list, I detach you from it all now. I break every generational curse off of you now. I break every curse of witchcraft off your life, every curse word spoken over you now, word of death. And I declare every spirit attached, every spirit of mental bondage and oppression, every spirit attached to what's on this list. I declare every spirit speaking in your mind, blocking you. I declare all, all spirits of death, all must leave now in Jesus name. Thank you, Jesus. Complete freedom now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, you are an amazing friend. Thank you, Jesus. And you spoke what you did. God is so proud of you. They brought the demon oppressed. They brought them. So you brought her. Both of you came from Germany and you brought her here to be free. And she was set free because of your obedience. Thank you, Jesus. Complete freedom. The bucket, please. Thank you, Jesus. God's continuing to free you now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Complete freedom in Jesus name. Thank you, Lord. So I see prophetically that God, there's a reason even why God seemed to delay the deliverance because he wanted you here today to, to, to not only receive deliverance, but to receive an impartation of anointing, a special impartation of anointing to take to Germany because now you will be like the Samaritan woman at the well, spreading the news far and wide, and the anointing shall be upon you. And I even see your testimonies you shared today, people in Germany seeing them and coming because you testified here. God is releasing a special anointing to you to take to Germany to, to prepare this harvest, to bring in this harvest. 
I declare that people will be attracted to your words, speaking to come to flourish and to receive from Jesus. I declare doors to open up so many, 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 many people will hear this word coming from your mouth and they will come and they will receive freedom and healing. I declare doors to open up for many more sick and oppressed people, you, you to bring to the conference in Jesus' name. I release this anointing upon you. May God use you in greater power to bring in the harvest in Germany and beyond. Receive this anointing now. Receive increase in your life in Jesus' name. Receive this anointing to bring in this harvest in Germany. May the people in Germany hear your words and receive these words and come and receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. After service, can you both record your testimonies in English and German like, tr so that we can share them and why they should come to flourish in Germany and Europe? Hallelujah. Praise God. God, Jesus, Jesus, he's so good, he's so good, hallelujah, he's so good, hallelujah, God is alive, this is revival, hallelujah, wow, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Well, we're going to get into the Word of God today. We follow the Holy Spirit here. So on a day where God wants a lot of testimonies to be shared and deliverance to happen before the message, that's what we do. We don't follow a program. We follow the Holy Spirit. We don't follow tradition. We don't follow religion. We follow the Holy Spirit. Amen? Hallelujah. I'm just in awe. Thank you, Jesus. We continue to be in awe of you, Lord. Well, this is an amazing celebration today of God's faithfulness and his goodness. I want to recap briefly. Last Sunday, um, I shared why, uh, why we are doing this. This is a direction from God that we would have two Sundays to celebrate his goodness and faithfulness to bring us in victory against so much opposition and the fruits of unwavering faith that we are now experiencing the fruits of standing strong in faith. So it, th this is why we are celebrating. And so to recap, um, this revival began to break out in uh, the spring of 2021. And the ministry, Fivefold Church, had been around for three and a half years at that point. And um, we decreased in numbers every year, starting with, a, I mean, we had about 20 the first year, down to two when 2020 came and when COVID hit. Chantal and me at times, at that time. And then revival broke out. God was faithful to his word that revival is now when we would see revival break out in LA, spread across the US and the whole world. That was the prophetic word for my now spiritual father, prophet Dr. Joe Davey. And he was faithful to fulfill that word about three and a half years after the prophecy was declared, was spoken. And we saw revival break out where the amphitheater where we were having this service was overflowing and deliverance was taking place everywhere. And people were being setting, set free everywhere and videos went viral and it spread across the whole world. Praise God. Where now there's events, there's flourish conferences all over the world, just like in Pretoria, South Africa last week, where about 2,500 or more came and received freedom. Hallelujah. But um, there's a big part of this story of overcoming opposition. Um, the devil really tried to stop this ministry. He tried to stop this revival. He tried to stop this work of God. He's tried so many times uh, to stop it, but he's never been successful. Because our God is greater, and greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And so even the devil tried so hard to discourage me by very early on in the first year, I experienced like a modern day Joseph's brothers having jealousy and trying to kill him. I experienced that like almost the same as the Bible of that story, except for not physically killing me, but trying to kill my ministry, Fivefold Church. I experienced that happening within just the first year of the church when we only had about 20 people. And that was one of the reasons why we did decrease in numbers. And these lies kept being spread 
uh, false accusations kept being spread, and that was a big reason why we kept decreasing. And through all of that, the devil tried to discourage me. He was trying to stop me as the leader, to, trying to stop me from uh, keeping on going. And um, he never won because God is so good and so faithful. And because of God's goodness and grace, I was able to stay focused and renew my mind that God is with me, that he will fight every battle for me. The devil can never win that truly he had called me to this, that truly this prophecy of revival in this now is truly from him. His promises are yes and amen. By his grace, he helped me remember that and not doubt his promises and to persevere even when it was hard. And then when revival broke out um, and we had about 300 that first week and just people traveled from on planes every single week since that day in 2021 every single Sunday since 2021 and the revival has just grown and the anointing has just increased and the numbers of people being saved healed and delivered and encountering God's power and receiving impartation has just increased since that day it's never slowed down gone backwards it's kept increasing for the glory of God amen and but but, you know, when the revival broke out, it felt like we're in the promised land. But it was just the first step into the promised land. And there were still enemies, giants to conquer, to really take possession of this place where God had given us dominion. Amen. Like, meaning this church is God's true anointed church. And, uh, and, and it's a leading ministry in this end time revival. Hallelujah. This is the place God's given us. But like it, it didn't come easily. It, we had to fight for it. We had to fight the good fight of faith. There was so many enemies who and some enemies with power, with money, with platform and influence that didn't want us to have the dominion of our promised land that wanted to push us out <laughs> that this was their territory only type thing um and so there's been so much opposition so much that you have seen and a lot that you have not seen as i shared last week that there has been severe opposition at pretty much most event like we i literally see the scheme of the devil working through people to try to stop the event from even happening <laughs> but every time the devil loses god wins the event goes forth god's people are delivered and there is victory hallelujah and um when the first like really big attack of the devil of in terms of like well I want to say first there it was like the second but this was even greater like the biggest like attack of the devil in the in the area of opposition um trying to really stop this move of God and try to end this ministry that came in the February of 2022 and that's when lies and false accusations were spoken in a greater level and by people of influence. And a lot of people were confused. A lot of people believed the lies. And a lot of people who had received freedom and, and, and have received salvation and abundant life just did a, a, a flip, flip the switch and um, renounced, renounced the, this anointing and renounced this ministry and just became Judas's. We saw a lot of that happen. And we had about 300 people coming to the church and then because of that attack it it decreased to about 150 or so at one time but god was so faithful to though there was those who left he never stopped moving and he's never stopped reaching more people who wanted to receive him he never stopped bringing in the harvest and increase he even through all of that even if in person there were less every single day online uh, viewers increased. Amen. So even though in the moment it can feel discouraging, it can feel like you're going backwards. 
There was never any kind of going backwards. There was never any kind of defeat that God had that we had. There's never any win of the devil. It can look that way, but that never, ever, ever happened. And God has restored now all that was lost, all that was lost to where now we are far beyond that number. He has restored all that was lost. And God also, you know, I want to just celebrate the goodness and faithfulness of God by revealing something so precious that God did in that. Because sometimes when we're just focusing on the, the promise like stadiums, right? Like we're going to go to stadiums and, 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 and the stadiums will be packed with people hungry to receive from Jesus and receiving freedom and healing and salvation and encountering God's power. But when we're like so focused on that, sometimes we can, we can not be um, understanding and respectful of God's ways of getting us there. We think we just want to go up the stairs. Doot, doot, here we go. Up, up a stair, up another stair, up another level. But then God sometimes has us stay in one step for a little bit. And sometimes go backwards a little bit. Go down the steps. We're here and then go down. But it's in the physical, it looks like we're going backwards. But we're not going backwards. We're going forwards in the spiritual realm. Let me, let me show you why. When those times happen, we're going to go to Matthew 13, 24. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then do the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. So this is Jesus giving a parable of the kingdom of heaven. This is Jesus giving a parable of his churches, of the body of Christ, and what he does amidst in, the, in his churches to make sure that his churches are pure. Anybody want to be part of a pure church? Like pure through and through. The foundation being pure. Anybody want leadership, like the worship team and those serving to be pure? Yeah. What about halfway pure? So if we had people serving here on the worship team halfway pure, you wouldn't be okay. You wouldn't, we don't want that. Good. Because that's what you should want. But some people don't care about that. Some people aren't there for purity. Some people are there for show, entertainment, networking, feel good, tickle ear message, picnics and barbecues, um, amazing music. So this is fruit. I'm glad I took that tally so we can even see the fruit. So anyways, um, the work that God is doing here is so important because it's a massive work being done because he's chosen us among other ministries. He's chosen this ministry to be one of the ministries leading the end time revival. And in the end time revival, what God is doing specifically is purifying the bride, cleaning the bride, transforming the bride, getting rid of the blemishes, the dirtiness, getting rid of the selfish motives among leaders, getting rid of the hidden sin among leaders, getting, ri getting rid of the ulterior motives, the selfishness, the pride, the ego among leaders. If the leaders are that way, if the foundation is that way, then it flows from the head down. Every, when people can see this is what to this is the example, this is what it's like to be like Jesus, then they will follow. So this is what God's doing right now. So um, 
this is so important. It's not like God, we're thinking like, let's go to the stadiums. But God's like, slow down. We, we got to do it right. We, you got to be pure. The foundation has got to be pure. I need to build this slowly. You know, like the skyscrapers um, need a bigger foundation than a smaller building, right? A, a deeper foundation. And how many of you know the bigger the building, the longer it's going to take to build? I mean, to make sure it's built right, to make sure that when an earthquake comes or any kind of storm, it won't be shaken. It'll stay, right? It was so amazing because when I was going through a period of, of four and a half years of waiting on the promise and if things were going real slow, for the first time in my life, I happened to live near where an apartment building was being constructed. And I happened to live where, where I was living. They were building this apartment building and, and I got to see them do it from day one, from, the, from digging the ground, breaking the ground to putting the foundation. And I would drive home from church and I would pass by it. And God would speak to me, I want you to pay attention at how slowly this is going. But you see how massive this building is. This is not just a house. This is a massive apartment building complex. I want you to notice the patience that's required to build this and build this right. And so God spoke to me through that, encouraged me. And so this is how it is with what God is doing here. It's something that strengthened me to hear this, to know this word. My spiritual father encouraged me with this word about the skyscrapers taking longer to be built um, because of the big foundation that's needed. And um, this is something for us to carry in our hearts that we're like, come on, let's go to the stadiums. Like, come on, let's get this skyscraper built. But God's carefully and perfectly laying brick by brick, making sure everything is in its right place. No cracks. He's doing it right. He's building it right. Amen. And so um, what happens whenever there is a revival, especially when we're just breaking ground, when we're pioneering, when God is coming and doing a new thing, you have all sorts of people coming. You have pure hearts coming. Those are the ones like some, those testifying this Sunday and the Sunday before that have been here for three years. They came in the beginning. They are, they represent some who have pure hearts. But there are so many, there was probably like, I don't know. I mean, there's, there's a couple more of you here that were there on May 30th and were there that first month and, and second month. There, there was like 10 or so of you probably at the most that were there during that time out of 300. There are those that whenever a move of God comes, a revival, revival is exciting to everybody, pure hearts and impure hearts alike. Those who are lukewarm and those who are surrendered. Those who have ulterior motives and those who have pure motives. It's appealing. Who doesn't like revival? It's exciting. It's fun. Right? Especially at first. Especially before you know the cost of being a part of the revival. Not just the cost of being a vessel of the anointing, but of co the cost of walking with Jesus as a disciple. Close the cost of persecution that comes. Persecution doesn't come on day one of the revival. No persecution, nothing but fun and exciting. Persecution comes after. And the persecution reveals the wheat versus the weeds. And so the, those that receive the persecution, this, the Bible says the pure in heart shall see God. If you don't have a pure heart, you can't see God. No wonder all of these people out there speak such lies, agree with the lies, speak false accusations, speak whatever they want to speak, negative. If you don't have a pure heart, you can't see God, the Bible says. So they see this and they don't see God in it. They see the devil in it. That's what the Pharisees did when they said to Jesus, Jesus is using demonic powers, Beelzebub, to cast out demons. They were not pure in heart, therefore they couldn't see God. They actually saw the devil, which was a lie. Same thing today. And so there's, there, there, the, uh, this, is some, this is a powerful word also for ministers out there to hear this. It's an encouraging word. It's not just like, let's go step by step, 
to the stadium. Let's grow every week. No. God brings a harvest. The, the weeds come in the harvest. They do. And God lets them stay there because he wants them to change. He has grace. He has so much grace. Judas was doing weird things for a while before he actually betrayed Jesus. He was stealing money from the treasury. He was entrusted with the finances and he was abusing that privilege, doing corrupt things. But Jesus didn't cast that weed out immediately. He gave him a chance to change. Hallelujah. And so that's why God doesn't take out the, the weeds immediately. So there comes a time when he gives people a chance that he'll allow an attack of the devil to come to see who's true and who's false. To see who has pure hearts who can see God, they will stay. The ones without pure hearts will not see God. They'll hear the devil's voice and say, the devil's here, I'm leaving. So that's what happens. So I, I shared this revelation because God revealed this revelation to me. And it makes me so humbled. Humbled, you know, like of God's goodness. It's his goodness that we are to decrease when it's time to decrease to get rid of weeds when it's time to get rid of the weeds. It's like a house that has tons of junk. It's better to get rid of the junk. But people without that vision think that the more junk you have, the more possessions you have or something, you know? So I say this because I, wanna, I want us to celebrate God in every way and every season and understand how amazing he is and how faithful he is. And so even when we, there was a time where we decreased in numbers here physically, that was the goodness of God. That was God purifying the church, <laughs> purifying the foundation. And it's important because, you know, you know I mean, right... What happens is when revival breaks out, you have all these people, all these people willing to serve. And so they become on the serving team, they can become leaders because you need people to serve. But then there can be people with wrong motives. And so real quick, you can have a foundation in the church that is impure. You can have wolves in the, in the church, in leadership. Just because you weren't obedient to, to letting God deal with the weeds. So we say, God, have your way. We don't complain when he wants us to take steps backward or when he wants to st us to stand on the same step for a little while, even though we're so hungry to go to the stadium, right? But we say, have your way, God, and that's exactly what God's done. He's pruned. And I look at our official serving team now, and I just thank God for his goodness and his, and his faithfulness. I see purity in hearts that were not here until years passed, until God could do this. I see purity like I, I hadn't seen until now. I, saw, I see purity that I didn't see the first year, the second year, the three year, the fourth, the third, third year, with the exception of Chantal. And Chantal can attest to that, amen? Her and I would be grieved when we'd see th th those who were serving with us, their hearts exposed. And we just longed for people to have pure hearts and just want God's will to be done and to value this precious anointing and to not have these weird other agendas and motives like wanting power, like wanting to be seen. We just wanted people to, to want to just receive the anointing and be blessed and serve the anointing, serve God, and help others receive like they have received. That's what I longed for, and Jean Tal was with me through all that time. We both longed for that, and it, it was hard. It took a long time for pure hearts to come, and so God kept doing this refining in the church. Some people would leave, but it ended up being for the best. I learned to thank God for those who had left because they had wrong motives and impure hearts that would pollute the whole church. 
Hallelujah. And so I can be at peace now with the worship team, with the serving team, with the official serving team. I can be at peace now knowing that the people are in good hands, knowing that the worship that's being released is pure. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He is so good. He is so good. His ways are perfect. And so may you take this in your own life. May you take this example in your own life. When you feel like you're going backwards, when you feel like the devil's winning, as long as you are surrendered to God, he has not won one time. God can't allow it. Because if you are surrendered, God is on your side. And so trust what God is doing. Trust the refining that's happening in your heart. Trust the purification that's happening in your heart. The promises that are going to come to pass in your life, your heart needs to be pure to be able to handle the promise or you'll lose it or you'll abuse it. You'll displease God. So that same kind of um, purifying process that God has done in this church, he does in your own lives. He doesn't give you what you want immediately because you can't handle it. You'll ruin the promise. So he takes you slower than you want to go. He makes your, you humble yourself when you don't want to humble yourself. You want to run, and God says, be still. Let me do a work in your heart now. So don't despise the, the slowness, the slow seasons, the seasons you feel like you're going backwards. As long as you are truly surrendered to God, you are perfectly in his will. And you are in the spiritual realm, taking a step forward every single step, every single day. You know, all that we went through, even the, when we decreased in numbers, that was, that was a beautiful step ahead in terms of the purifying us, making the leadership to be pure, making the foundation to be pure. When there were people with wrong hearts, bad hearts, wrong agendas, we're, we're not in the place we want to be. But when we're clean and we, we, we even decrease, but we got clean, we've moved forward. We've made progress. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So it's been victory in every season, even when the enemies thought that they had won because there was like a decrease in numbers for a season. They never won. God won every time. God gave us victory every time. Hallelujah. James 2.17 says, In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. I shared last week that to get to us to this place where we are now, for the glory of God through this ministry, through his anointing here, reaching the world, reaching so many nations where 33 nations came to LA to the Flourish Conference to encounter Jesus, where there's more than 2 million followers or subscribers on all the social media platforms that are receiving this anointing here, watching here at Fivefold Church across the world. We have gone glory to glory. We have gone from standard to standard and faith to faith. It's all because of God's goodness, his faithfulness, his power moving in our lives, in this ministry, and because of our yes to God of having faith, unwavering faith. So this is what we are celebrating, and I'm sharing this I've shared this message last week and this message this week to also open up your eyes for your own personal life to help you have victory like what we like the victory we've experienced at Fivefold Church. Amen. So it has been our unwavering faith. That is the reason and God's faithfulness. That is the reason for the victory. That is the reason for all of these fruits. 
we never doubted. We kept believing. We kept believing in the promises. If we never, if we doubted, we would not be here today. You would not be sitting here listening to me today. We would not be in this place. The faith is required. God needs us to have faith to do these miracles and to bring this victory. Today, I want to talk to you about the importance of faith with works. The scripture says faith without works is dead. So faith is that belief in the heart. Believing that God is good, he's faithful, believing in his promises, believing in our future that he has promised us of hope and to prosper us. That's faith. Faith, not, not believing in what we, not, 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 not trusting what we see, but believing the unseen. That's faith. But we can't only have faith in our hearts. We have to have also faith in works. Faith with works. Amen? So when we talk about faith with works, another word we can call this is obedience. God says, do this. We do it because we love God. And we have faith that when we do this, it's going to lead to the promises coming to pass. It's going to lead to goodness, victory, peace, joy, abundant life. All the good things, it's going to lead to God. Sometimes we don't know why God's asking us to do something, but we know that nothing but fruits will come from doing it. I don't know why God's asking me to do this. I don't know how this is leading me to my purpose being fulfilled, but he just said to do it. But I know I have faith that nothing but good will come from it. I know that only being in his will is here when I obey. That's the only time I'll be in his will. And that I'm going to experience some kind of fruits from it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, um, Moses, when he lifted his staff, this was faith and works. Wonders happened when he lifted his staff. If he didn't lift his staff, but only had the faith in his heart, but didn't lift his staff, the wonders, the miracles wouldn't take place. He had to have faith in works, the obedience when God said, lift your staff. And then the wonders would happen, put it in the sea, it turned to blood, um, lift it, and the waters parted, etc. And also Pharaoh, go, or, uh, Moses going to Pharaoh and saying, let my people go, that was faith and works. That was obedience. And so him continually doing what God was asking him to do, go to Pharaoh and, and ask him. It, it didn't feel like anything was happening. It felt like the biggest place of stagnancy. It felt like even he's going backwards. It did feel like he was going backwards because there was repercussions, bad repercussions that came from that. Mo uh, Pharaoh started getting mad, started punishing the Israelites. So it felt like he was even going backwards, but actually he was going forwards in the spiritual realm. So this faith and works obedience led to eventually Pharaoh finally saying, fine, go. Amen. And then the Israelites were set free. Hallelujah. So that's an example, biblical example of obedience, of faith in works. And um, the children of Israel, they were told to walk around Jericho. And they walked around the walls of Jericho, and that made no sense. It's like, how is this going to make the wall come down? But they did it anyways. They, did, they, they had faith in works. They obeyed. Because God said, told them to do that. And when they went around, the number of times that God told them to go around, the walls came crashing down. The power of God made the walls to come down because of their faith and their faith in works, their obedience. Amen? Hallelujah. So uh, I remember I, I started 5F Church um, before I felt ready. I did not feel ready at all to start the church. I, I felt like so inadequate as a preacher, as an apostle, but God said to go anyway and to start anyway. And so I had my faith in works through starting when I wasn't ready and for three and a half years still feeling like I wasn't ready, still feeling like I was not a good preacher. I was not adequate enough. 
I felt that way for like three and a half years. But didn't matter how I felt. What mattered was faith and works. What mattered was obedience. That was going to lead to the miracles, the victory, the promises coming to pass. Amen? And um, I, three and a half years into that, it was COVID times, and God instructed me to go live every single day to encourage people during the season of COVID. And so for a few months, I went live every single day, still in that time where I didn't feel like a good enough preacher. But God had told me to go live every single day for about three months, seven days a week, preaching and praying for people live. And sometimes zero people were watching at that time. But it didn't matter what it looked like. It didn't matter how I felt. God said to do it. So that was faith in works. Hallelujah. And going to the park with just two of us, Chantal and I at times, preaching, ministering. One day it was 110 degrees and I was preaching to one person and the person left in the middle of while I was preaching. And that didn't feel good. And that's three and a half years into this obedience, walking around the walls of Jericho for three and a half years, waiting for the promise. But that was faith in works. All of that, all of that obedience was faith and works, just like the Israelites going around the walls of Jericho. So in the spiritual realm, the obedience was adding up. The faith and works was adding up for the miracles to take place. Our faith opens the door for God to move in power and do the miracles and bring the promises to fulfillment. Not just our faith, our faith and faith in works. Hallelujah. So um, I want to go over now one of the biggest areas of, one of the biggest parts of our action of faith, obedience, is what you speak and what you do not speak. Numbers 13.30 it says, then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, we should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. So um, this, was, this happened after Moses sent a group of spies, a group of the Israelites, to go look at Jericho, their promised land, and, and assess the situation, assess the, the armies that were there. Do you think we can defeat them? What do you think? So we sent them to go. Now, remember, they already knew what God had spoken. They already knew that that land was theirs. They already knew God was on their side, not the people in Jericho. They already knew that, right? So this was really a test of their faith. Would they keep believing in the word that was spoken? These spies went. They rep then they reported to Joshua. And Caleb, he says, we should go up and take possession of the land for we can certainly do it. And um, before he had spoken that, before he had spoken, it says he silenced the people. He silenced the other spies because the other spies were saying, we will die. There's, they're bigger than us. They are greater not, than us. There's no way that we're going to have victory. And Caleb silenced, silenced them, not because he's thinking, oh, you know, they didn't see right. Actually, you know, they're wimpy. They, I didn't see muscles on them. No, he, he didn't silence them and correct them because of that. He, he silenced them and corrected them because they were not seen spiritually. They were not ha carrying the spirit of faith. And so Caleb knew it doesn't matter physically how this appears. God has spoken that this is our land. God has spoken that he is with us and that we will have victory. So that's the report. I'm repeating the report of God no matter what I saw. I know that God's going to do a miracle. A miracle is needed, but God is going to do a miracle. So he silenced the people and he spoke out of the spirit of faith. And we're going to skip to Numbers 14, the next chapter, verse 6. Joshua, son of Nun and Caleb, son of 
Jephunneh, who were among those who had explored the land, tore their clothes and said to the entire Israelite assembly, the land we passed through and explored is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and will give it to us. Only do not rebel against the Lord, and do not be afraid of the people of the land, because we will devour them. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. But the whole assembly talked about stoning them. So the other spies and the other people are angry at him for speaking this because they have no faith. They're not carrying the spirit of faith. Then the glory of the Lord appeared at the tent meeting to all the Israelites. The Lord said to Moses, how long will these people treat me with contempt? How long will they refuse to believe in me? In spite of all the signs I have performed among them, I will strike them down with a plague and destroy them, but I will make you into a nation greater and stronger than they. Now I'm gonna summarize what happens next. Moses pleads with him and basically says, have grace, Lord. Please forgive them. So he's, it's like we can see, this is, side note, this is how to find Jesus in the Old Testament. We are called to, we are called to find Jesus in the New Testament. Rather than taking words literally from the Old Testament, we have to read with the proper revelation. Amen? And so, He's speaking like Jesus here. He's speaking out of grace here. Jesus, new covenant is when grace came. So Moses is speaking grace here, right? And so verse 20, the Lord replied, I have forgiven them as you asked. Nevertheless, as surely as I live and as surely as the glory of the Lord fills the earth, not one of those who saw my glory and the signs I performed in Egypt and in the wilderness, but who disobeyed me and tested me 10 times, not one of them will ever see the land I promised an oath to their ancestors. No one who has treated me with contempt will ever see it. But because my servant Caleb has a different spirit, spirit of faith, because my servant Caleb has a different spirit and follows me wholeheartedly, pure heart. I will bring him into the land he went to and his descendants will inherit it. Verse 29, I'm going to skip to verse 29. In the wilderness, your bodies will fall. These are the people that didn't believe, who had it, the wrong spirit. Every one of you 20 years old or more who was counted in the census and who has grumbled against me. Not one of you will enter the land I swore with uplifted hand to make your home, except Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, son of Nun. As your children that you said would be taken as plunder, I will bring them in to enjoy the land you have rejected. But as for you, your bodies will fall in the wilderness. Verse 28, of the men who went to explore the land, only Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, survived. Remember I told you, as you can see, such amazing victory we've seen here at Fivefold Church and promises fulfilled. It has come much in part because of faith and faith in works, because of the spirit of faith we carried. That's why we were able to enter the promised land, because we believed what God had spoken. And we only confessed what God has spoken, not doubt, but we confessed the truth, God's truth, God's promises, despite how we felt how things appeared. And that's how we've entered the promised land. This is like what happened in this passage of the Bible we're reading right here. Joshua, Caleb, they carried a spirit of faith. They spoke only words of faith. They spoke not how they were feeling. I'm sure they were feeling differently, but they chose to only confess words of life, truth, faith, agreeing with God's promises and God's word. And so because they did that, because they had they had faith in action, works of faith. They got to go to the promised land. But only them, only them. Those who did not confess only the true words, words of faith, the promises, they didn't make it to the promised land. This is how it is today. So many are now receiving the benefits, the fruits of this revival, of this anointing in their lives continually. They are walking in the promised land. They are you. Many of them are you. You are 
taking your place in the front lines of God, front lines of God's revival army. You are walking in your purpose. You have been set free. Some of you are continually being set free. You are he- you've been healed. You receive impartation. You receive the blessings that have come from the anointing, peace and joy, abundant life. But it's because of the spirit you have, the spirit of faith, because you follow God wholeheartedly with a pure heart, because you've chosen to not agree with the enemies and speak words of doubt, speak words that you don't know, misjudge and speak these words of you of judgment but you've only chose to speak words that please God and align with his word and promises. And that's why you are here. And others have missed it because of the false words they've spoken, because of the words of death they have spoken, because of the times they haven't held their tongue, because sometimes they're speaking words of faith, other times they're not holding their tongue and their words of death are canceling out their words of life. So they're cursing themselves on repeat. They're avoiding the blessings, the words of life they're speaking, aligning with God. They are continuously blocking God from coming and doing miracles in their lives. Isn't that passage powerful? This is how it is today. This is how it is today. You know, people, I've seen people do disgusting things to me that I don't, I don't share because I, I don't want to give attention to the devil. I also don't want to speak negatively about the people even without sharing their names and stuff. I don't want to do that. I, I don't want to be, be, be spending an hour describing to you evil things that people have done. But I can tell you people have done sick, twisted, evil things that would make you cringe. Biblical type evil things that we see. How people came against servants of God that I didn't know what happened today. I didn't know Christians could be so evil. It shocked me and continues to shock me. But all of those things that have happened to me, even from that first year with these gross lies being made up about me, my spiritual father, and spreading them everywhere, I never spoke words against them, privately or publicly. I prayed for them. I know this principle of you reap what you sow, but I knew God was calling me to see them like Paul, who used to be Saul. So I didn't, I knew God was causing me to not want them to reap, even though that would be justice. But God wanted me to love my enemies and pray for those who persecute me and still want the best for them because that's God's amazing heart that he's calling us to have too. So I prayed for them. I blessed them. I forgave them all. And I chose to not speak, this person lied this, this person lied this. Let me show you the DMs that they spoke to me to show you they're lying because that would be defending myself. And that would also be speaking negatively about that person. So even though that person deserves it, God was calling me to have grace because that's what grace is. We don't deserve grace, but God gives us Grace upon grace upon grace. And he calls us to give that to others. So yes, they deserve to be exposed as liars, as evil, as, as bringing division to the body of Christ, as bringing, leading people astray with their evil, plotted, twisted plans. But God called me to show them grace and more grace and love them and not speak. Listen, this is the truth. This person is actually doing evil. No. He called me to just be quiet and in in private, bless them, pray for them. But in public, be quiet. Don't defend myself. Don't prove myself. Don't say, see, see the receipts. No. Hallelujah. But this is a part of the the positive confession that we must make if we want to see the amazing hand of God upon our life and do miracles in our life and reach the promised land. It's part of it. 
It's not only declaring only the truth. That's just part of it. We must always be declaring, this is, what, this is what God has spoken. It must come to pass. And that's what I would do. Week after week, there was, we would dwindle in our church, and I would say, revival is now. Revival is now, again and again. I would say, this is the prophecy that my, my spiritual father has spoken. Revival is now. I speak it with 10 people, then we dwindle to five people, then we dwindle to two people. Same thing, same words. Same words at the church. And it was the same outside of church. I didn't go to my spiritual father and say, what's happening? Where is God? God seems to be letting me down. I didn't say any of those words. Why are we decreasing? You have spoken that this was going to happen. You said soon. I humbled myself. The prophet's word soon is not my interpretation of soon. I humble myself. God's word of soon is not my same interpretation of soon. I humble myself. So instead of being childish and complaining and, and being like those people, the spies that were like, they look big and scary. I don't know about what God said. This is what I see. So instead of me being like that and say, I know God spoke this, but I don't know because we're just getting smaller and smaller and smaller and people don't seem to want to receive this anointing and people are not believing the truth and people are believing lies. I don't know how this is going to work. It's been three and a half years. We've been decreasing every year. I don't know. I don't know, my spiritual father, prophet. I don't know. What do you have to say? What? No, none of that. I knew that that would be prideful. I knew that that would be disobedient. I knew that that would be doubting and not putting my faith in God because God never guaranteed to me that I was going to have a day-to-day -day timeline of events of when all the promises would be fulfilled. God ne never guaranteed to me how the church was going to grow, how it was going to look like. He just spoke this promise and this promise. He doesn't say the in-between things. So who am I to complain about the in-between that I don't quite get, I don't understand, doesn't make sense to me? But truly, I, I never, like, complained to my spiritual father. I never complained to God. And one time, I remember specifically, it was an attack that was really difficult, another betrayal, another just really, really hard time. I remember just crying and feeling like, this hurts. This is hard. This has been years of this. And I remember just choosing to speak. I willed my mouth to speak only thankfulness to God, praising God, renewing my mind. He's in control. He knows what he's doing. So I remember saying, Lord, through tears, I remember saying, Lord, I thank you that your hand is on my life. I thank you that you have the perfect plan. I thank you that you are taking me through the refining fire and taking me through all that I need to go through to prepare me for this huge, massive promise you've called me to. Lord, I know I'm not even deserving to receive this promise after 50 years of going through refining fire. So I trust you, Lord. I trust you with this process, with all that you're doing. Thank you, Jesus. I spoke those words instead of complaining. I felt like complaining, but I chose to not complain. I chose to have faith in works with only confessing positively. And it says in Mark eleven twenty two, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart in God's unlimited power, but believes that what he says is going to take place, it will be done for him in accordance with God's will. For this reason, I am telling you, whatever things you ask in prayer in accordance with God's will, believe with confident trust that you have received them and they will be given to you. A big part of prayer is walking in your authority and speaking to the mountain. So, so Jesus said to the disciples, when you, he's basically saying, when you have faith and faith and works, when you use the authority I've given you and open your mouth and speak, speak the truth, speak God's will, speak in authority, the mountain will move. God's power will come through and make the mountain to move as you speak in authority. So, so Jesus says, he doesn't say, if you simply believe that God will move the mountain, he'll move the mountain. He says, if you speak to the mountain and believe that God will do it and believe in the power of your words, the power of your positive confession, the power of faith and works, just like the, the Israelites going around the walls of Jericho, then the mountain will move. And so there was power in us speaking, revival is now. Revival is now. Revival is now. Again and again, 
it was speaking to the mountain, move. You spirit of religion, you move. You spirit of the Pharisees, you move. You spirit that rejects apostles and prophets and the Holy Spirit, move. You spirit, you religious spirit that won't receive women as pastors and apostles, you move. You spirit that will not receive the new wine, move. You spirit that, that has hate and judgment, you move in Jesus' name. You spirit that's trying to blind people from receiving, receiving the new wine, you move in Jesus' name. When I'm saying revival is now, and this prophecy must come to pass, that's the action of saying, mountain, you better move. Hallelujah. 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 Sometimes it's as simple as that. Jesus says, mountain, move. It doesn't always have to be for these religious prayers in the prayer closet, declaring this, declaring that, declaring this. Simply, revival is now. Mountain, move. Everything hindering this revival, this move of God from being received. Mountain, move. Revival is now. Revival is now. Revival. So it's all of these words. It's the words confessing the truth. Revival is now. The prophet spoke it. God spoke it through the prophet. It must happen. I will speak it again. I will speak it in the mountaintops and the valleys. I will speak it again, the promises. Instead of the opposite, doubting, I will speak only the truth, the promises of God. Hallelujah. 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 And it's also speaking, it's also speaking positively and holding your tongue when the enemy is trying to tempt you to speak against people, to speak against your enemies. So this was a big part of it, to, 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 to quiet your mouth when your mouth wants to complain, to quiet your mouth, to shut your mouth when your mouth wants to complain, to shut your mouth when you want to gossip, to shut your mouth when you want to speak against your enemies, to shut your mouth when you want to prove and defend yourself, to shut your mouth when it wants to speak words of doubt and death, to shut your mouth when it speak, wants to speak anything against what God says about you, your future, and God's people, and God's promises. It also means this. And this is what has take, pl taken place in this ministry. This is the history of this ministry. This is how we have gotten here. It didn't just happen poof. It just didn't happen instantly. It just didn't happen any old way. It happened because of faith, unwavering faith, and faith in works. In the positive confession only of faith. And in God's power to move the mountain, every single mountain, his faithfulness, his goodness, and his power. This is how we have arrived here in this place of victory and going from glory to glory, amen? And so take this word for your own personal life. Apply this word to your own personal life. Whatever mountains are in your own life, you gotta speak to them. You gotta take more care over your tongue. You gotta learn how to shut your mouth. You gotta learn how to be different and not like most Christians. Yes, I say most Christians because most Christians do not have their eyes opened up to the power of their words. Many Christians are lukewarm and many Christians are in the old wine. So you are called to a higher standard, a higher standard of purity, a higher standard of faith, a higher standard of obedience. This is your calling and this is the standard here at Fivefold Church because this is a place of purity. This is a place of reverence for God. This is God's house. He must be respected. His ways must be respected. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. I shared a scripture last week. Um, I shared a scripture last week. Um, I'm going to share it again. Zephaniah 3, 8. 
This is a prophetic word for now. For in that day, all the earth shall be consumed by the fire of my zeal. Every demonic mountain, religious mountain, old wine mountain, Pharisee mountain will be consumed by the fire of God's zeal for his people to be free and his church to be purified. It will be consumed by his zeal. His love for his people, his love for his church is far greater than the hate of the devil working among this earth and in the church today. And so God's love and zeal will consume the enemy and his plans and the people he's working through. Amen. Then I will give to the people's clear and pure speech from purified lips, which reflect their purified hearts. So those of you who have come with pure hearts and God's purified your hearts here, you've been delivered here, you've been transformed here. God is giving you clear and pure speech so you can be like Joshua and Caleb, so you can be like me and others, leaders, Jean-Tal, who've continued to confess the truth. Revival is now. You can do this now. He's calling you to be like this now and join this revival army now so that many more people can receive and come be a part of this revival. That all of them may call on the name of the Lord to serve him shoulder to shoulder, united. We will serve God shoulder to shoulder in unity. United, that we just want God's will to be done. We are selfless. We don't care about our pursuits anymore and our selfish ambitions. We've died to ourselves, and we are united in heart, after God's heart, servants of God, servants of God's people. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my worshipers, my dispersed ones will bring my offerings. On that day, you will feel no shame because of your acts by which you have rebelled and sinned against me. You will feel no shame because God's grace is here and he's delivered you from your past and you're a new creation. Then I will remove from among you your rejoicing ones who delight in their pride. He's removing the weeds, those who delight in their pride. And you will never again behave arrogantly on my holy mountain. On this holy mountain here, on this holy place right here, we are going to bring an offering as he, as it says, they will bring, my worshipers will bring offerings. So I instructed last week a prophetic instruction to, to prepare a special offering to give thanksgiving to God for his faithfulness and goodness and victory over all opposition in your personal life and in this revival and here at Fivefold Church. So in a moment right now, it's going to be a time to bring this offering. This is a special offering to honor and give thanks for what God has done. Just like when we bring, have celebrations for people on earth, like wedding celebrations and birthday celebrations, we, we make it special. We financially make it special, bring gifts, honor them. This is what we are doing for God today with this offering. Amen. If you want to give online, you can go to 5fchurch.org slash give. There's also a QR code there. And we have envelopes on the seats as well. Lift your seats up right now, or if you're still preparing it, you can lift your hands as I declare over you. With this seed, let everything that was holding you back from being full of faith from speaking only life, from being all in for Jesus and a part of his revival, let it all be removed from your life now. Let grace come upon you now. With this seed, let more grace wash over you. Be free of everything that held you back. May you now become completely pure in heart a complete, pure-hearted worshiper that God can use that touches his heart. In Jesus' name, may there be increase with this seed. All lack gone from your life. In Jesus' name, amen.